was the flood of Nu, Noah, peace be upon him, a global event according to Islam. Who was Nu, Noah? Peace be upon him. He was Nu, bin Lamech, Lamech, bin Methuselah, Methuselah, bin Konuk, also Idris, Enoch, bin Yared, Jared, bin Malahiel, Mahal Olel, bin Canaan, Kenan, bin Anush, Enos, bin Sheath, Seth, bin Adam. His story can be found in several chapters of the Quran. The Prophet Nu is considered one of the five messengers and prophets of might, sent by Allah. The Quran refers to these five as Uluwal Azam, which means possessing the qualities of might and firm in patience and endurance, among other things. Allah says, <laughs> So be patient, O Muhammad, as were those of determination among the messengers, and do not be impatient for them. In Arabic, as an example, when a group of people are mentioned, and certain names from that group are highlighted for a further mention, then this is called The closest meaning I could translate this to would be a special mention from within a group to emphasize importance, position, rank, etc. within that group. This was one of the methods which led to identifying from the Quran, the prophets and messengers of might. Let's look at one such example. <laughs> And mention, O Muhammad, when we talked from the prophets their covenant, and from you and from Noah, and Abraham, and Moses and Jesus, the son of Mary, and we talked from them a solemn covenant. So, from the category of group of prophets in the verse, the following five were given a special mention, therefore, they are identified as prophets and messengers of might, they are. Nu, Noah, Ibrahim, Abraham, Musa, Moses, Isa, Jesus, and of course, Muhammad, who was the one being addressed in the Quran. Now that we have introduced very briefly this mighty messenger and prophet of Allah, let's delve into the subject of this video. The Prophet Nu is mentioned 43 times in the Quran. Allah told us in various verses, across different chapters to whom he sent his Prophet Nu, and snippets of his interactions with his people. Allah says, <laughs> Indeed, we sent Noah to his people, saying, Warn your people before there comes to them a painful punishment. And And it was revealed to Noah that no one will believe from your people except those who have already believed, so do not be distressed by what they have been doing. Allah also relates in several places the interactions between Nu and his people. Inna 
and construct the ship under our observation and our inspiration, and do not address me concerning those who have wronged. Indeed, they are to be drowned. And he constructed the ship, and whenever an assembly of the eminent of his people passed by him, they ridiculed him. He said, if you ridicule us, then we will ridicule you just as you ridicule. And And we had certainly sent Noah to his people, saying, Indeed, I am to you a clear warner. That you not worship except Allah. Indeed, I fear for you the punishment of a painful day. So the eminent among those who disbelieved from his people said, We do not see you but as a man like ourselves, and we do not see you followed except by those who are the lowest of us, and at first suggestion, and we do not see in you over us any merit, rather, we think you are liars. He said, O oh my people, have you considered, if I should be upon clear evidence from my Lord while he has given me mercy from himself, but it has been made an apparent to you, should we force it upon you while you are averse to it? Other examples referring to news people. And we destroyed the people of Noah before. Indeed, they were a people defiantly disobedient. The people of Noah denied before them, and they denied our servants and said, a madman, and he was repelled. The Prophet Nu was also mentioned by the Prophet Shu'ib, who was sent to his people in Median, in the northwest of modern day Saudi Arabia. He said to them, And O oh my people, let not your dissension from me cause you to be struck by that similar to what struck the people of Noah, or the people of Hud, or the people of Solid. And the people of Lot are not from you far away. Allah left no doubt whatsoever in these example verses we have seen to whom Nu was sent. Let's review some of what the verses we have just heard said. Please note the words in red.
We do not have any narrations from either the Quran or the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad that new was sent to the whole world. Nor do we have any narrations that the people of new were scattered around the world. Given all that, and what we have seen the verses state from, his people, O oh my people, the people of new, etc., as well as the interactions with his people, which we have no narrations were worldwide, we can conclude that the Prophet knew was sent to his people who lived in a specific geographical location. He was not sent to the whole world. Please note, we do not have any authentic narrations of the exact location of where Nu and his people lived. Modern day Syria, the Arabian Peninsula, and most famously Mesopotamia, in modern day Iraq, near the border with modern day Turkey, among other places, have been given as possibilities, but the position is, we simply don't know. Allah confirmed to us that he sent a messenger to every nation, warning them as well as giving them glad tidings in their language. <laughs> And we certainly sent into every nation a messenger, saying, Worship Allah and avoid Taghut. And among them were those whom Allah guided. And among them were those upon whom Era was deservedly decreed. So proceed through the earth and observe how was the end of the deniers. And we have never sent a messenger who did not use his own people's language to make things clear for them. We do not have any narrations or confirmations from the Quran or the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad of any prophet or messenger being sent to the whole world, except for the Prophet Muhammad. Allah confirmed this to the Prophet Muhammad. <laughs> We have sent you as a bearer of glad tidings and a warner for the whole of mankind, but most people have no knowledge. Brief summary. In light of the example verses we have seen, and in the absence of any confirmations or narrations to the contrary from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, we conclude that the flood of Nu was not a global flood. Let's list some of the well-known arguments presented for a global flood over the centuries and see if they can be interpreted differently. We will look at the following arguments for a global flood. The word, ard, or with a definite article, alard. For example, in Quran chapter 54, verses 11 and 12. Quran chapter 10, verse 73. Quran chapter 11, verse 40. Quran chapter 26, verses 119 and 120. Quran chapter 37, verse 77, and Quran chapter 11, verse 48. Quran chapter 71. Verses 26 and 27. Seashells, 
fish fossils, etc. found on top of high mountains around the world. We will also have a quick summary at the end and address two most frequently asked questions. The word ard, or with the definite article alard. For example, in Quran chapter 54 verses 11 and 12. Ard and alard is the same word with and without the definite article there. The word ard or with the definite article alard has several meanings and not necessarily just the ones chosen for centuries to explain the flood verses. These are some of the meanings world, earth, region, land, province, district, terrain, territory, area, country, dirt, dust, ground, soil, etc. It is often claimed that this word, art, in the verses related to news flood, refers to the whole world. From there, it is claimed the flood was global. Let's look at some examples. And it was said, O earth, swallow your water, and O sky, withhold your rain. This verse is one of the ones deemed a strong evidence for those who claim news flood was global. It is claimed by them that the word, art, which is earth, and which we have underlined in the verse, refers to the whole world. This is not necessarily the case. It is more appropriate that it refers to a specific geographical location since new was sent to a specific geographical location and not to the whole world. Let's see another example where this word refers to a geographical location rather than the whole earth. This was the allegation of the magicians of Pharaoh, Pharaoh made against Musa and Harun, Moses and Aaron. They said, indeed, these are two magicians who want to drive you out of your land with their magic and do away with your most exemplary way. Similarly, Allah was addressing the land where the people of Nu lived. Let's give an example with the definite article, the Al, for those who do not read Arabic, to show that it doesn't apply differently with it. Incidentally, the example we are about to give is considered a strong argument for a global flood by those who hold this opinion. But as we will see, the verse can be interpreted in more than one way. Then we open the gates of the heaven with rain pouring down. And caused the earth to burst with springs, and the waters met for a matter already predestined. The same word alard, underlined in the verse, can also refer to a land, not just the whole world. As we have seen from the many different meanings of this word, here's another example of that word in another verse referring to a specific geographical location rather than the whole world. The context is very important. O my people, enter the holy land which Allah has ordained for you, and do not turn back, or else you will return as losers. As we can see, 
The word Alad, underlined in the verse, refers to a land and not the entire world. Otherwise, the implication would be that the entire world is holy. Similarly, the word Al-Ad in the flood verses referred to New's land and not the entire world. Otherwise, the implication would be that New was sent to the whole world. The context is very important. Quran chapter 10 verse 73 But they rejected Noah, calling him a liar. So we saved him and those who were with him in the ark, and made them successors to the authority in the land, and drowned all those who had rejected our signs as false. Consider then the fate of those who had been warned and still did not believe. In their exegesis of this verse, some past scholars, such as Ibn Kathir and Atabori, stated that the word successors means on earth. You then see this opinion, reflected in some English translations of this verse, such as Yusuf Ali, who added in brackets, the earth, and Marmaduke Pickthall, who added, in the earth, for the word successors. There is no evidence to support this. In fact, the translation we used as an illustration from Abu Allah al mordudi used successors on land instead of on earth. This was the most accurate rendering of the original, since Nu and his people lived in a specific geographical location. Quran chapter 11, verse 40. <laughs> So it was, until when our command came, and the oven overflowed, we said, load upon it, i.e., the ship of each creature, two mates, and your family, except those about whom the word, i.e., decree, has proceeded, and include whoever has believed, but none had believed with him, except a few. Some of the early Quran exegetes and giant scholars of Islam, who to date command great respect, agreed upon one version of explanations for certain verses of the Quran. Most of their research was influenced by narrations attributed to the companions of the Prophet Muhammad, especially Abdullah ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him and his father. Most of these narrations, including the ones linked to this noble companion, were either fabricated or what is termed Israeliat, stories circulating among Jews and Christians. This is particularly true when it comes to narrations about the flood of Nu and his descendants. Exegetes or Mufasirun like Ibn Kathir, al Qurtubi, at Tabari. Ibn Hathim and others are examples of those who used a vast number of narrations attributed to Abdullah ibn Abbas in their works. The job of a historian is to relay all famous events and all available information of interest they are able to gather related to these. This was exactly what the Quran exegetes and historians, Ibn Kathir and at Tabari did. For example, 
Ibn Kathir commenting on this verse stated that the companion and the cousin of the Prophet Muhammad, Abdullah ibn Alabas, may Allah be pleased with him and his father, said that at Tanur in the verse refers to the face of the earth. However, a few lines later, he also reported him as saying that at Tanur is in India. Ibn Kathir even included another meaning for at Tanur, attributed to the fourth caliph and the cousin of the Prophet Muhammad, Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with him, who supposedly stated that at Tanur refers to dawn time. At Tabari also includes the exact same narrations attributed to the same noble companions mentioned. There were a lot of fabricated narrations attributed to the Prophet Muhammad, his noble companions, and many that came from Israelites, as well as some from those who simply wanted to match biblical narratives. These are some of the meanings of at -tanur. Furnace, kiln, cooker, oven, range, etc. It was also narrated by Quran exegetes, including the two we have already mentioned, and even by Al Qurtubi, that among other things, the Tanur were the kilns or ovens in people's homes, from which flood waters first gushed out, signaling to Nu to get on the ark. This brings us to the other line in the verse, also used to support a global flood. We said, load upon it, i.e. the ship of each creature, two mates. It has always been claimed that this was a reference to every single animal species on Earth. In fact, there is nothing to suggest this from the flood verses in the Quran or from any Sahih narrations from the Prophet Muhammad. This was nothing more than matching biblical narrative by some. Let's analyze this. So we are told that, as soon as Allah commanded the flood to start, he ordered Nu, a very old man, to gather every animal species on earth, in pairs of male and female, and get them on the ark. There is no indication that Allah did this for Nu. The verse shows this was a direct order for Nu to do it himself. The verse also tells us that only a small group of people believed him and were on the ark with him, so they wouldn't have been much help either. Allah says, Allah does not charge a soul, except with that within its capacity. Aside from this being beyond the capability of any man let alone an elderly one, what would be the point of gathering two of every single animal species, kill the rest, just to start the same species again after sending them where they were gathered from in the first place? This command was obviously referring to the animals that were already there, for example, the cattle of Nu's people for sustenance after the flood. This would have been far easier and more practical, and there would have been more time to gather these once the flood had started and the order to gather them is given, rather than the entire world animal species. Quran chapter 26, verses 119 and 120. So we saved him, and those with him in the laden ship. Then we drowned thereafter the remaining ones. These two verses are simply saying, Allah rescued Nu, and those from his people, who were on the ark with him, and drowned the rest of his people who disbelieved in him. 
there is no indication in the context of the verses, or from the verse itself, that the words the remaining ones refer to the rest of the world, as is claimed by some, including some exegetes and translators. Quran chapter 37, verse 77, and Quran chapter 11, verse 48. And we made his descendants, those remaining on the earth. If you look at the translation given, the translators have added, on the earth, to the line, those remaining. Some past Quran exegetes, such as Dibbin Kathir and Atabari, Commenting on this verse, narrated a hadith which may have helped to influence some translators. In a hadith, and commenting on the verse we have just seen, which stated, And we made his descendants those remaining on the earth. The Prophet is reported to have said, Sam, Ham, Yophith, referring to the three surviving sons of Nu. So from this hadith and other ones, it was concluded without much opposition that post flood everyone on earth descended from these three surviving sons of Nu. Let's look at the most famous of these. Samurai Ibn Jumdab, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Prophet said, Som was the father of the Arabs, Hom, father of the Ethiopians, and Yophith, the father of the Romans. There are three versions of this hadith in Jamie at Tamidi, two with the same chain of narrations. Jamie at Tamidi, 3230, Book, 47, Hadith, 282. Jamie at Tamidi, 3132, Book, 47, Hadith, 283. Jamie at Tamidi, 3931, Book, 49, Hadith, 331. All of these narrations have been classed as weak. In fact, we have no clear confirmation from the Quran or any authentic hadith from the Prophet regarding the whole earth's population descending from the surviving sons of Ni. All we have are weaker hadith some narrations attributed to a few sahabas, some exegetes by some scholars, narrations by historians, and so on. However, nobody can say for certain, as that would contradict what Allah said about nations we haven't been told about. Allah says, <laughs> Has there not reached you the news of those before you, the people of Noah and Nod and Thamud and those after them? No one knows them, i.e., their number, but a lot. Their messengers brought them clear proofs, but they returned their hands to their mouths and said, Indeed, we disbelieve in that with which you have been sent, and indeed we are, about that to which you invite us, in disquieting doubt. We can see here that the translators have added in brackets, i.e., their number after the words, no one knows them. This is Sahih International Translation. Other similar translations include, 
Dr. Mustafa Katab, Al Mordudi, and among those who do not include this edition, Abdul Halim, Yusuf Ali, etc. It seems the addition of these specific words was to maintain the exegesis that all humanity is descended from the surviving sons of Nu. There is no evidence from the Quran or the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet not to take the verses at face value. Moreover, Consider these two example verses. O descendants of those we carried in the ship with Noah, indeed, he was a grateful servant. Those were some of the prophets who Allah has blessed from among the descendants of Adam and of those we carried with Noah in the ark and of the descendants of Abraham and Israel and of those we rightly guided and chose. Whenever the revelations of the most compassionate were recited to them, they fell down, prostrating and weeping. Two conclusions were drawn from these two verses. Although the reference in the verse to the descendants of those carried on the ship with Nu could include the sons of Nu. It also allows for their exclusion. Furthermore, the verse says descendants of those we carried with Nu and not descendants of Nu. There were only three surviving sons of Nu with him, therefore, they've had to have intermarried with those on the ship. Let's go to the other reference in this section. Quran chapter 11 verse 48 which is also used to support the idea that the whole world post flood descended from the three surviving sons of Nu let's see if it can be understood differently <laughs> It was said, O oh Noah, disembark in security from us, and blessings upon you and upon nations, descending from those with you, but other nations, of them, we will grant enjoyment. Then there will touch them from us a painful punishment. Traditionally, the exegesis, called tafsir in Arabic, stated that in the verse we have seen, when Allah said other nations, he was only referring to generations to come from those on the ark. Some translators would emphasize this with their explanations in brackets. Let's look at Sahih International Translation we displayed for this verse. Notice the words in brackets. It was said, O oh Noah, disembark in security from us and blessings upon you and upon nations descending from those with you. But other nations of them, we will grant enjoyment. Then they will touch them from us a painful punishment. Let's remove the translator's comments in brackets and read their translation again. It was said, O oh Noah, disembark in security from us and blessings upon you and upon nations from those with you. But other nations, we will grant enjoyment. Then they will touch them from us a painful punishment. As you can see, without the translator's comments, you are not swayed into believing that all humanity descended from those on the ark. 
Quran chapter 71, verses 26 and 27. And Noah said, My Lord, do not leave upon the earth from among the disbelievers and inhabitants. Indeed, if you leave them, they will mislead your servants and not beget excess every wicked one and confirm disbeliever. These verses have been used over the centuries as evidence for a global flood. However, consider the following. From the prophets and messengers narrated to us in the Quran, Nu spent the longest in calling his people to worship Allah throughout. He was subjected to abuse, insults, assaults, and his people persisted in worshipping false gods. Given all that, and Allah informing him that aside from the few of his people who had already believed him, see Quran chapter 11 verse 36 as shown at the start of the video. It was narrated that out of frustration, Nu supplicated against all disbelievers on earth, as the verses we saw showed. It wasn't because Nu was sent to the whole world, or that the entire world consisted of his people or such, as some believed and others translated the verses to mean. It's on the account of the word al in the verse, that the idea of a global flood was favoured, however, as we have shown, that word has several meanings, including land, and not just the whole world. Moreover, the Arabs at the time of the Quranic revelation did not understand the word earth or ard to automatically mean the whole world. Another opinion regarding this was that when New used the word the earth or al ard, he was referring to his land and not the whole world. There are many examples of where this word was used elsewhere in the Quran, referring to a land or location. It's not automatically a reference to the whole world. The context is very important. In this case, the context was that Nu was sent to his people. In a specific geographical location, he was not sent to the whole world. Let's show another example from the Quran. To illustrate this use of the word, the earth, or alard, to mean other than the whole world. So I will never leave this land until my father permits me, or Allah decides for me and he is the best of judges. In the verse we just saw, the eldest son of Yaqub, Jacob, was not referring to the whole planet when he stated, So, I will never leave this land. He was rather referring to the land in Egypt he was in at the time. Seashells, fish fossils, etc found on top of high mountains around the world. Seashells, fish and other marine fossils on top of high mountains around the world prove a global flood. This is another argument put forward in favour of a global flood. We find this used by some prominent scholars and read about it in many books. However, this is not the field of expertise of these scholars and in the absence of authentic evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, we refer to the experts in this field. Advances in geological studies have led to the discovery and a better understanding of how these fossils settle on mountain tops. And when we go to the experts, they tell us. Rocks with marine fossils in are found in many mountain ranges due to the movements of the earth. Tectonic plate movements push up mountain ranges and can uplift rocks that were once deep within the crust. 
Summary Although it is true that the vast majority of Muslim scholars today, and based on the giant scholars of the past, hold the view that the flood of Nu was a global event, we are not obliged to do the same. Moreover, there is nothing from the Quran or the authentic Sunna of the Prophet Muhammad to support just this one view. Verses related to the flood have been translated for centuries in favor of a global flood. Furthermore, where the Quran and the authentic Sunnah were silent on the details, Israeli yachts and biblical narratives were added to fill these gaps. Two most frequently asked questions. If the flood was just local, then why did Allah command Nu to build an ark instead of just telling him to go to the neighboring areas? It is important to note that we do not have the capacity to always understand the wisdom of Allah, nor should we question it. It would be like asking, why did Allah split the sea for Moses instead of? We do not have anything from the Quran or the authentic Sunna of the Prophet on how long Nu took to build the ark. Suggestions in years included 2, 40, and even 100 years. However, these were just conjectures based on stories circulating among Jews and Christians. When Allah commanded the rains to fall, and the waters to gush forth from the earth, through people's kilns and ovens first, it was a signal for Nu to leave. Of course, for an elderly man like Nu, leaving the land on foot, after gathering two kinds of each animal they had, and his family and the few believers with him, would have been hard. Travel on foot sometimes took months, however, with the ark, there would have been minimal effort. How did Nu fit two of every kind of animal on earth on the ark? He didn't. As was stated earlier on, the two of each kind of animal were from Nu's area. There are narrations that even claim that Nu was commanded to plant specifically Alsaj trees. To use to build the ark, it was said these trees took 20 years to grow, and the construction of the ark took between 40 to 100 years. These narrations have no basis in the Quran or the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad. These were nothing more than stories circulating among Jews and Christians at the time which some companions imported, and there were others falsely attributed to the companions too. It is more than likely that New built an ark big enough for him and his sons, the handful of believers with him, and to have each animal from his land for sustenance after the ark came to rest post-flood. Allah told us what New used to build the ark. Allah says, <laughs> We carried him on that ark made of planks and nails.